sorry past with certain people, I think. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of stuff that we need to work through with her and just get into a good place. But if you just this quick. Yep. So so this, this is Willow, she's about five years old. We've owned her for about 18 months. We were sold her as the perfect children's pony, which she is anything but. She's been through, as I can find out through Trace My Horse, approximately five plus homes and had potentially one or two foals. We know she had one foal very, very young at the age of about two. Um, and has been starved to the point of near death twice. Oh, she has okay. learned some very bad behaviour. Um, she was hobbled by a breeder in the attempt to force mate her, so she had issues with her feet. She has learnt um, through having been whipped to try and make her into a trotting pony that if she uses her head, she can block and push you out of her space. And she has a tendency to be food worried and push through anybody, so she can be quite cheeky, but all of it is fear driven. So we've come to Wayne to work on all of those issues with her. So, yeah, she's been abused, and you can't pick up her hooves. We're still working on that. Uh -huh. There's a lot of things we're working on. Um, but the fact that she was hobbled, she, you just touch her, touch her uh, around the hooves now, and she just. She erupts. What's up? Was when they tie their feet together, Wayne? Yes. So hobbling is, there's nothing wrong with hobbling if it's done correctly. Mm -hmm. You know, if you teach your horse how to stand still and if you need to hobble, like if you're out in the, out in the bush or, you know, on a big yeah. journey, you might need to hobble your horse, otherwise it'll you run, off, yeah. <laughs> run off or follow the, follow the nice green grass and be 10 kilometres away in the morning. Mm. So it has its, it does have its purpose. Um, I, I preferred to tie up, I, I did a trip through Argentina, I spent a, a year in Argentina on horseback mm. and I used to just put a nice tight rail up between the trees and have them on a fairly long line. I thought it was in yeah. yeah, yeah, so that seemed to work like a polo line. Um, but after, after a couple of months with those horses, she's still learning the end of the rope and to mm. stay connected. Once she does connect, she's really good. But she's stressing at the moment about the other horses and what's going on over there and she just pushes you around. Mm -hmm. She's got all these things so she's learned to be defensive and also she's, re she's afraid of the, um, of the stick. Mm -hmm. So we've been working on that a little bit too. Can you just get, if those of you can clap, can you just give me a little clap quickly? We'll just see how she reacts. Really low, really low. Yeah, really low. Good, thank you. They got her attention. <laughs> so there's a lot of that. So you can see um, she's been here for a week. Um, she's a little out of her comfort zone here. But what she does when she gets stressed, she'll start, she, and also impatient, she'll start to push you around. She's very pushy and yeah, she doesn't fine. really give you space. Um, yeah. She'll just, when you're walking down the road, she'll no, just no. go and no. pull on you. Huh? No. I think there's a few people that have that problem, especially when you're going to from the no, paddock. No. <laughs> Your horse is gone, so I'll just let her go. Just reach the end of the rope and then I'll bring it back again. So teaching a young horse to to understand where the end of the rope is and what it means is she's learned to pull into pressure rather than to release the pressure. So uh, I've seen I've seen uh, I've seen you guys skidding down the road. Yeah. <laughs> it often often is, is, is a sign I'm coming out of the paddock. <laughs> the horse is uh, stressed, um, doesn't have any real connection with people. But if we just stand still and just give her that opportunity to be calm and quiet and stand still, that'll send her a message. But at the moment, it's like, see you, I'm out of here. <laughs> so they'll go to the end of the rope and just walk into the end of the rope again. So this, 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 this repetition here, just here, could take 10, 20, 30 times before the horse understands to stand with you and to relax with you and to connect with you. Now I've had some real, really special moments with her, haven't we? Uh, where she's really connected and almost doing some liberty with us and you wouldn't say so looking at this no. um, but once she does connect and that's the whole purpose this morning is just to show you how we can connect with her you can see how she pushes me around mm. in my space yeah. and it's good to see because there's a lot of people out there with the same sort of issues <laughs> then she'll get bored so she's got a bucket on the ground or something she'll empty the water bucket out she'll kick her bucket around she'll move around she just can't stand still Oh, a big she's not aggressive though, is she? No, she's not aggressive at all. Um, not, not, not that I've seen anyway. 
Um, if you start to push her out of a really out of comfort zone with her who's though, she can throw a few down at you, eh? Yeah. yeah. She just stands a bit. She will occasionally go to fight when she gets really fed up, when she gets really cross. Okay. But there's a fine line between uh, there's a fine line between um, getting some respect and trust with her. So basically, the the respect side, eh? the respect side of the equation builds trust too, just like with a human relationship, building some trust. Get her to move her feet a little and just move around it. Let's see if she'll move off or she'll stay with me. Bit, might she? mm. so just let her go to the end of the rope. Normally I'll put a knot in the end there. And just to pull them foot in it. Yeah. What you'll find is when you start out, if you've got a horse that's doing this, they'll often now uh, pull to a stop. So they'll pull themselves around. If she goes away, let her go. Long, no, no. And then there's the end of the rope. So there she, you see how she connected with me there, now she's gone again. Mm. <laughs> so what I'm going to look for here, is she's having a look around, she's trying to connect with the other horses, she's trying to find something to connect with, so I'm just going to be here for her. So when she looks at me, I'll just draw in towards me and start to get her to connect with me. She's got her attention, you see it. Mm. And she loves to scratch. So scratching is a great opportunity to release endorphins and get the horse to, to uh, settle down. We'll try again. Find find the spot. Spot. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that's why I wear gloves. I'll put my hand here just in case I get a little nip. So sometimes when they nip like that, it's not it's not an aggressive thing in this Scratching. case. It's more of a thing scratch me harder. So often if they push against you and start to nuzzle you with their with their teeth and then she that's enough of that she's off so her concentration and focus is almost non-existent yeah, and that's our goal right now just to get her to connect a little she'll feel follow my feet or she'll wander off <laughs> so she's going to move her feet a little to send her around See if I can get some focus from her and let her move her feet. Yeah. She just slowly starts to get to correspond to my body language. Yeah. So there, that's a that's a big improvement for where we started. I think we've had a, about six hours of training with her, and she starts to respect you a little more as the process goes along. I'm going to move her feet a little. Sure. Let's see if we can get her to relax and correspond, you know. That's right, it's important, isn't it? Towards the wall, You'll see a change in her as we go along. You see a bit of a change in her attitude towards me. <coughs> so move her feet a little again. So it's going to get her to move here a little. Start to pick up that pace a little. Bring the spirit, though, isn't it? Mm. You see how she comes at me? Yeah. But she's used to coming around and then straight over you and moving your feet out of position so we've got to hold our ground here to make sure that she doesn't come into my space and just by getting taller i'll start to send that message to her listen don't come in my space so i'll start off here if i need to i'll get taller 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 and just stay out of my space immediately our ground tight so i give the horse a chance to mm. stand still to relax too that's good isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, and breathe out I'm going to allow that because she didn't move off away from me, so I'll allow her just to come in and connect with me. Without it. You see how she creeps up on top of me? So I see this a lot. And what happens is we step backwards and the horse just keeps pushing you. So eventually it's got your, got your number, it knows how to move you around. And that very subtle act there can lead to all sorts of problems. So I've been working a bit on sending her around. You can see a little bit of attitude here. Hello. 
you know, gives you very character. So she made a good call. Huh? I'm glad that she doesn't mind the crowd so much. So she's going to wander off and have a little run around. So I've got to find something to connect to. I've got to find something. Uh -huh. There's something out there. I can hear the other horses. I can get out there and connect with them instead of connecting with me. So just through a couple of simple things to start with, and then I start to sort that out. Really and she's got the concentration mm. span of a gnat at the moment. <laughs> Did you see, Did you see how she threw a leg out of it? Did you see that? So a little bit of dominance, a little bit of, a little bit of, I don't know what's going on here because I'm on my own. It's the first time she's been out here on her own with me. So we're struggling with focus a little bit because some people are arriving. So I'm going to take out my flag here. I've got a little flag that I use just to get a little bit of tension. Sometimes I might need it just to get a bit of space too. So I'm going to see if I can get her attention a little. So every time she looks away, I'm just going to bring her back to me. And see if she'll start to look at me. So the flag is a great training tool if it's used correctly. If you overuse it, you can end up with problems. Mm -hmm. So let's see if she'll just stand still for a little bit. So my goal really, more than anything else to start with, is to get her to relax and to release and to just to stand still to start with. So we'll start with a little bit of pressure and release on the halter here. And just see if we can get it to start to drop, release. That's really good. So the flag is a great training tool, but it's something if you overdo it, can go in the wrong direction because if the horse becomes oversensitized to something, I'll so move the hind quarter there and just get it to focus on me. So just by moving that flag and moving that hind quarter around, I can get it to start to focus on me a little bit and just relax a little bit. We've been working on, this is our biggest thing really to start with, with this little girl, is getting her to stand still and just relax and not to stress, everything's okay. And just to stand still. It's okay if she looks around, I'm okay with that. As long as she just stands still and relaxes. And I'm going to start to get to drop that head down just to see if she can release the pressure because she's used to pulling against pressure. She hasn't learned to where to find release. So she was sold as a, a rideable pony, was she? Yep. We uh, we had a, a go at just sitting on her bareback this weekend. Oh. <laughs> she was barely Definitely. broken and was being ridden, but the pony was sold to us with tack and the tack was the wrong side. The people at the yard she was sold from um, had a young lady there that was a little bit over enthusiastic with everything she did and she injured with those back. So she ended up throwing my daughter off a couple of times and we haven't ridden her since. So we've given her a year off to just work on all of these behaviours and start at the beginning. So the kind of horse that really, if, you, if you'd known more, you probably would have, would have said, no, she, she's not ready. So spent, you know, having to take that time to work with the horse, to get the horse to trust us. And now she's had some bad experiences. She was quite difficult to touch around the mouth here to start with. Uh, I think she'd been squeezed and someone dug her nails in her and things like that. So you can't blame Hi there. You can't blame her for her lack of enthusiasm <coughs> to connect with us because she's had a bad time. So she's not that confident and not that trusting of people. Uh, when we picked up our training stick around her too, she was really worried about it. Yeah. Get her attention again. So I'm just going to keep working on getting her attention to send you around. Me. Now she's a little, she's a little bit of all or nothing. So sometimes you've got to push her on, and you've got to use a bit of energy to move her on. When you went to use it, you use it just like one. Yeah, just move the legs around and in front. She's got the spikes. Just move it around in front. Spikes. That won't get around. No, it's there. I want to get it to focus on you. So this can take an hour just to get the horse to focus and to 
start to read my intention and direction. So like we talked about earlier, scratching is a really good way to release endorphins in your horse. And if they show you that they'll probably eat your spot, just to pick it up and scratch it. And it's a great way just to get relaxation and just release endorphins. You notice when I touch her on the forehead, she's a little worried about that. We're getting better at that. So when we tried to touch on the forehead there, she just put her head up in the air. She moved her head away from us. She wasn't keen to be touched around the face. <coughs> just gonna come back here and just get her to relax a bit more. It's important when you're relaxing just to breathe out. You can prop one leg. You can get down lower. Just get them to relax and find that patience. So when we, when we tied her up for the first time, uh, she, she wouldn't stop moving. At home, she was quite happy. She had a hay and she stood still. Here we asked her to stand still without any hay, lifting up to stand still. Um, so I can put my saddle on, I can do my grooming, just making sure that they're able to stand still and be respectful of my space and start to loosen up a little bit. And one of the things you can do is help just by working these eye muscles around here, just rubbing around that area and just getting to drop and relax, helps with relaxation. The other thing you can do is just nice, nice little rub around the nose here. They like the ones in Turkey. Some of them like it, some of them don't really like it, but if you can rub around here, that connects with the emotional side of the brain, so it helps with relaxation. And then finally, just being able to touch in here, because eventually you want to put your wormer in and your bit if you're going to use a bit and just get into to loosen up in the TMJ joint so just get some relaxation if I get that relaxation and focus then we can start to work together and immediately our ground tie so I teach it to stand so eventually I can just drop my rope there move around her and she'll just stand still that's that's my ultimate goal there I'll give her a little clap and just see how she copes with that. Okay. Yeah. So you can see she's okay with that, but she's not a not a hundred percent. But that's good. She's starting to relax a little, starting to release a little, starting to drop her head a little. Yeah. So I'm just gonna take her for a little walk and just see if she'll stick with me and Spend some time with me walking around, stopping, walking on. You can see how she's behind me a little. So that, that shows me that the relationship needs to grow and strengthen so that she will stick with me and become my shadow basically. So when I move, she moves. When I stop, she stops. So now ground tie. So giving your horse the opportunity to do the right thing to you by so by letting go often we just we're creating that opportunity finding out how much our horse trusts us and how much we can trust our horse so sometimes you have to go past that threshold and trust and just give it a chance give the horse a chance to do the right thing instead of micromanaging I see a lot of people uh, walking around holding the horse really tight here and that can cause problems too with the softness and the release to the rein so no focus there so it's going to send her around a bit so we're practicing sending around as a walk and a trot just getting her to move around so I'm more interested here not so much in going around around in circles I'm more interested in really focusing on me <laughs> and this 
this is an interesting dynamic for her because she's not been in here. She always has her buddy in here. We work together, two horses. So this could be interesting. Daisy, do you mind just passing me those two sticks over there, please? I'm going to try and come back here and just get her to relax, release, and just she's just here. Yeah, okay. Just pop them down there on the floor. Thank you. Has anyone got horse, a horse with these sort of, sort of problems? No? Uh, yes? How's it going? Are you dealing with it? We are. We're doing, yeah, we're, we're, we're doing it two or three times a week, trying to. Yep. Um, and it improves, and then the next time you come out, we're back to square one again. Back to square one. The worst thing is bringing her into the field and then tying her to a groomie, and then she's like really pushing it into me. Okay. You know, there'd be no space here to. Yeah, right, so this is the key here, is being able to get them to stand still. So I might spend quite a lot of time standing, just standing still here, <coughs> teaching my horse how to relax and release and just stand still. And that comes through with me standing still too. Just relaxing. Sorry. What's that? Um, I, I sort of help the lady just uh, look after the horses, just sort of feed them and that. But they've been in the field a long time; they're not ridden or anything. Yep. One of them's quite. He's a bit. He's quite bargy. Just walks off. It's not so bad. So bad with me, but she's quite stressy. The owner. Yep. Here. And the other one's um, one's a cob, big cob, and the other's a. And I'm not quite sure what it is. It's a trotter. Mm. Um, and he's more dominant. The bigger cob. Um, I, I can put a lead on and tie them up in front of hay and then groom them, but when I tried to groom them the other day, they weren't having any of it. Okay. You know, I just, uh, they were like, pouring the front, moving their back around. I did what you did, just, just sort of gently... Just to stand still, yeah, good. But, um, we'll, touch, we'll, we'll touch on all those things that will help you with that yeah. sort of thing. And we'll have a chat at the break yeah. about it if you've got a specific question. But if you've got any questions, then feel free to ask. So I'm just going to use my training stick here a little bit, just to desensitize her a little and just get her to focus a little because she's not really focusing on me and also we use the stick we don't want her to be afraid of it but we also want her to respect it so that she can not be af afraid of it but if I need it to help me get her to move and to turn and to yield a shoulder or a hind quarter I can use that and also help a bit with the tension I think the flag was maybe a little bit too much for her but just being able to touch her all over with that yeah, we started see with that you to, to do some work with her being comfortable with moving that stick around her so when we picked up the stick the first time she was off she didn't want to have anything to do with the stick <laughs> but now she's a little more comfortable with it yeah so we spent quite a lot of time just getting her used to being having a stick around her being able to move her and then I'll start to bring it towards me just to see if it's focusing on me. Yeah. yeah, she sort of comes around me and tries to push over me. So I've got to deal with that. I've got a couple of things I've got to work on. And one is that shoulder and the hind quarter. So just being able to get that moving nicely. Which is not coming in my face. So every time I ask her to turn, she just comes around and then it ends up on top of me. So I've got to teach her to respect my space. If I ask her to turn or hind quarter yield or shoulder, she'll do that it's a quick one. and she'll understand what I'm saying. So if I move this hind quarter around, she doesn't come around. So I'm going to push her a little harder. So you see a little bit of licking and chewing, so yeah. we're starting to get through to her a little bit by little bit, we're getting through to her, she's starting to connect with me a little, and that'll come and go with every horse that you work with, you know, especially to start with, there's a bit of a yawn, so that's also a good thing, so she's starting to feel relaxed, 
her little brain's already full of stuff because she hasn't done this with me before, separated from the other horses and done this on her own. So it's a great opportunity for us to, to connect and bond. Oh, okay. That's good. So that's one that, if I see yawning, I'm really happy. I'm, you know, I feel happy about that. And she can scratch herself, drop her head down, relax and just stand still. But just by getting her to move her feet a little bit and focus on me a little bit, I use my carriage stick a little bit, just to get her to focus on me and relax. But if I need to move those feet, I can. But by moving the feet, I can get this sort of nice calm place to be in and just promote that. So I might spend 10 minutes just standing still to start with, especially with a horse that doesn't know how to stand still and connect. So eventually I'll take the rope off and just see if she'll follow me and just spend some time with me and uh, she might walk off though. But just through, just through some simple exercises here, I'm sending her around, around me, all the circle here. See, if I was at liberty, she'd be gone right now. If I can get her to keep me around, I'm nice and easy, left and right. I'll focus on me. Now, I'm always interested in how she's her body language, how she's communicating with me, she's cocking that ear in, she's looking at me, she's focusing on me. She's thinking about moving her feet, so she's going to relax there a little. But to start with, if I haven't got this relaxation and connection point, my training, a lot of my training is not going to be going through to her because she's not really here, her body's here, but her mind's not here. So just by bringing her mind back to me, I can get it to start to relax a little more. Uh, she's still a little sensitive about being touched around here. Uh, just get it to loosen up here again. And, uh, so just by touching on the gum there, I'll just get it to loosen up, move her tongue and just loosen up a little bit. Yeah. So let's just see if you'll move with me. So let's just see if you'll stick, a, stick with me a little bit. start to see a positive training there, yeah, change in her behavior and her relaxation. Yeah. Just give a little clap and yeah. see. Yeah. Okay. So now, who's got any, has anyone got a question? 
No questions. <laughs> so you just had a week one, awe. yeah? <laughs> Sorry? I think we're a bit in awe. <laughs> so you just had a one week? Yes, one, yeah. yeah, she's been here yeah, one week. We've yeah. been working with Kelly and um, Victor uh, with her. Yeah. So it's been a it's been a bit of uh, the, the horse has been learning, but also the person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they've been coming every morning and working with her. Yeah. If I was working with her on my own and just working with her, she'd probably be, be a little bit further along. Yeah. We've got to teach yeah. people. It's most it's more important that the person knows how to do yeah, this. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we've noticed the difference even just being here, just short amount of time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So relaxed. So that's the, yeah, that for me that's the most important thing uh, before I start training. Now, once I've got a bit of relaxation and a bit of connection, then I can start to train her, yeah. teach her what I'm looking for. That's what it's great. So it's important to teach your horse, I think, to start with. That the, the arena is a place of where they can find relaxation. Yes, we're going to work, yeah. but also we can find relaxation. Um, and obviously, we're looking for connection is our biggest thing. So whether my horse will follow me, come to me, or not. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll do a bit of work on that. So we'll just get it to start to follow me and just connect with me a little more. Just in the sun. Mm. So just to send her left and right here a little bit. Teach her to connect with me and follow my energy and my language. So she starts to look to me for that direction, intention, and this sort of thing will come and go to you. You'll have a, you'll have that connection, and then you'll be gone. She might wander away. Yeah. Being a little bit more respectful around her head here, she's moving away from me. If I need more, I'll just pick up my stick, push her around. If she moves away from me, I'll try and draw her back to me. Yeah. But she's the kind of horse too, you see how she, she's, her focus is She'll focus on you, and as soon as you stop her, she's gone. So well, I would focus. Really like, what is she seeking from you? Leadership or just a friendship? Yeah, a le leadership connection. Yeah. Because um, that's what they're looking for in the herd, you know? Yeah. If they're not connected with the herd, then they become stressed. Yeah. They don't have that calm energy that a herd has when it has calm energy. Together, yeah. or, or, it ha or the herd may have high energy because they're running away from something. Yeah. And they pick up on that energy. And intention so if one horse says i'm out of here all the others will go Shit, you better go too yeah. <laughs> and that's you know it's that, that's one of the things that people struggle with when they ride riding with a group of people and yeah say two of the group head off and you stuck behind whether your horse is going to stay calm a lot of yeah. people don't have that yeah yeah and that's where the connection and relationship is so important. Yeah, we've seen and them when you're riding the horse and then you go past horses in fields and they'll start just running like crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. Like crazy. Yeah. yeah. So in that situation, you don't want your horse to run. No, no, and, you don't want to run with them. No. And so st then that's what this, you know, the groundwork training is. It's a lot to do with connection and relationship. Yeah. So the horse has a relationship and the trusting relationship. With, a, with an individual rather than actual just a whole herd all the time, yeah. Yeah, with an individual to yeah. start with. But in yeah. general, I mean, if a horse is handled by more than one person, um, you should really be on the same page. With so everybody, yeah. They yeah. should be on the same page of understanding. Yes, really. um, I watched a couple of young ladies a couple of days ago at a yard with a young thoroughbred. And she came over, she was really impatient came over and said, get in the stable. And I said, no, I'm not getting in the stable. So she had a stick. She gave a couple of claps of the stick on her butt and said, I'm not going in there. Yeah. So she wandered off and got someone else to help her with a stick. <laughs> and they stick the horse into the stable. So that's not a relationship. No. That's fear-based. That's fear, yeah. Um, pushing. Um, often time constraints, we, 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 don't, yeah. we don't have time. So we get, up, get yeah. on with it. Um, you know, some people, I've had instances where the, uh, someone says, let's go for a ride. I arrive, you know, with the time that it takes to get the horse ready to do that. 
Um, if it's if it's moving around while I'm saddling it, then I know I've got things to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, if it can't stand still, um, I'll do that first yeah, because not, not I, right I don't right. want to end up on a ride, start a ride on a bad or fidget yields. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I need a calm horse. And then there's the exercises. She's been Victor's been doing really good with her with her flexing and just getting her to flex and bend. So this is a really good exercise to get your horse to bend and flex. And, see you up here in this position for a young horse being able to rub here you see her patience also helps with building patience so just being able to flex without movement to start with so make sure that i'm grounded my feet are nice and still and then start to pick up and teach my horse how to bend also brings back the focus i'm looking for if she moves i'll just hold the bend and she stops and release so she moves off there and I pick up a bend and stop. So if I was sitting on my horse, I would be able to do the same thing. Yeah. If things getting, if I'm, if I'm losing connection and I'm losing my horse in terms of it taking off, I just disengage the hind quarter just by being able to bend. So you teach them on the halter first. Then if you're going to bit your horse, it's the same thing. I'll be able to bend, flex and bend. So she moves off here. I'm going to bend her to a stop. Yes, that and just disengage that hind quarter. So I can flex left and right. So Victor's been practicing this and she's been really good at it. Today she's a little um, a little worried about stuff, so she's not as good as she normally is. And you can see the focus. So if I can't bring that focus back to me, then I'm going to bend her here. Start to relax and release. I'm going to move the feet, I'm just going to bend her to a stop. Then I'm going to teach her some patience also by getting the bend and holding the bend. So over time, I can just get it to stand here and just bend a little. It doesn't have to be a big bend, it can be a small bend, as long as it's a, you get a bend here and some focus. And then release. Wow. Good. And eventually, I can bend both sides. She might move here. And bend left and right from either side. I can also get it to bend from the rear, bend around and face me. And go back. This was a tough one here. Yeah, a bit. Oh, there we go. So mm -hmm. I'm really happy with that. That like makes my heart sink mm -hmm. because <laughs> she didn't do that when she got here. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. Foot's up, is it? Oh, yeah, foot's up, isn't it? Her yep, she cocked her leg up, yeah. she's having a bit of a lick in her shoe. You can help your horse here just by getting down. Oh, my knee's a bit dodgy at the moment. But just by lowering our body language and just standing still or kneeling down. If you trust them enough, you can sit down. Yeah. But you can spend a lot of time just doing this. You know, this is this is the foundation for everything because the horse that can't stand still, yeah. normally when you get working, you got problems, it's not really learning more reacting than responding yeah, we find we look after quite a lot of wild ones as well and we find if they're, they're all fidget if we just sit down sit still away from them yep they'll calm down they eventually they just that's come it. to you anyway that's it yeah and, and that's the best calm. way to learn about horses is actually to go and sit in the field with yeah, them that's what we do, and watch yeah. them interact yeah. and how they move each other's feet and yeah. just by cocking that ear back they can move another horse away from them so yeah. just by looking and just going like that this horse might move away. Yeah, it's very that. subtle signs, and yeah. often horses that are stressed, you'll see you'll see little wrinkles around the face, the yeah. mouth here, around there, and around here. Yeah. You see a lot of wrinkles, um, and when they get stressed, you'll see the nose come up, the eyes stop blinking because of the stress levels coming up. Yeah. So if they if they relax and blinking, that's a good place to be. You know. Yeah. Can we try another clip? So that's what connection is all about and training techniques is lots of different training techniques on how to do things but the important thing is that patience patience yeah, is the time. biggest thing i think that people time, isn't it? Like you just lately i've been noticing that a lot it's not sometimes it's not even patience it's lack of time yeah so we've got an hour we finish work and we get home yeah and we go to the stables and we've got an hour to do everything get them done and often that rushing that's um, doesn't promote 
Hawks calmness in the Hawks because yeah. we're in a hurry. Come, let's go, let's go, let's get on, let's ride, let's go. And the I'm Hawks sure doesn't have time to really feel that yeah. can relax yeah. with you. So obviously starting with your it's ground work. Better than more fun you yeah. 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 It's important. It's important. But just uh, just where she's come in a week, you know, I'm really proud of her. You can still see these little. She has some little moments about worrying about stuff like the stick because she was beaten with the stick. So you can't blame her. So it's, you can't take that memory away from a horse. You can only just put good stuff on top of it. And so with a horse that's been abused, you have to be even more patient. Take more time, like we've been brushing down the legs here or just touching her with a, our hand first so we can touch her down here. But I'll start off with a stick so I can touch her around there. But as soon as I put my hand there, you'll see a different story. So yeah. Oh, she's even blocking me from going there. So yeah. because she's had a tough time. <laughs> <laughs> so the important thing, there's a really nice clue there to if the horse is uncomfortable with something, is if it does that. So what I do is just step back and say, I acknowledge that. I can see that you've got a problem with that. And I'll step back and just give it some time to relax and then step in again and just see how it feels about that. Sometimes I may have to drop my hands, calm, breathe out, and maybe even step in sideways. Yeah. I'm less confrontational when I step in here. But there was nice. She wants to connect with me. So she's touching me. So you can start to do your liberty work, which, which Nick is finding at the moment is really strengthening the relationship, isn't it? So spending some time being able to take that take that halter off and see if your horse will stick with you and stay yeah. with you 99% of people they probably won't ever do that yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it's quite rewarding that part of it isn't it yes that's one of the most re rewarding yeah. part I think so we're going to try and just send it around me now yeah. start off with being able to send the horse around to draw and push at the same time <coughs> And I'll try and see if I can get it to come around me this way. So I'm draw and push at the same time. Get it to start to move around. Try and get the around. So that's a big change from where we started. Any questions? It must be a question. I was going to say, so can you do this? Oh, I've got a youngster. So if I'm out in her paddock and she follows me around, obviously do similar sort of stuff. Yeah, and loose and let yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can experiment with her or you can let them go in the arena. Or if you've got a round pen, it's just let them go and just experiment with it and play and just see what sort yeah. of connection you have. Because sometimes you, there's already a connection. Yeah, it's I just mean, them understanding what you're asking them to do. It. It's like when you're creeping and they follow you around and they're just, <coughs> that, oh, that's just how being nosy and... Now often it is, you often find they'll do that, they're nosy and want to come hang out, but yeah. the fact that the, the horse is even with you is a good sign. Yeah. Or I'm not standing in the corner with yeah. his bum yeah. towards you going, leave me yeah. alone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and eventually when you go to the paddock, the, the horse will go, yay, yeah, yeah, come running yeah, over, yeah, not, yeah. not just come and fetch me. <laughs> 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 and then I'll move some. <clears throat> so, working on that... Uh, connection with the youngster too so you know using that opportunity to see whether she will play with you if you if you if you have food in your pockets that's a big that's a big problem I think for a lot of people is having food and yeah, reward re rewarding for food not to say that you can't reward with food it's just how you do it um, otherwise you can get into a horse that's really pushy and can start to push yeah, you around so almost start rewarding them for bad behavior you always, yeah, yeah. It switches it around, you, doesn't it? You, you, you can absolutely yeah. you can go in that direction. Yeah. And now we see how relaxed she is. Amazing. So if you do me all a favour, just stand up. <coughs> just exercise those legs. <laughs> I just wanted to see how she responds. Okay. And then everybody sit down. Did you see her head come up? So that's a subtle sign. The other subtle sign of anxiety is twitching in the mouth. If you see the mouth twitching, it's a subtle sign of, of anxiety. So if your horse is having those sort of moments, 
um, then you know that there's some anxiety there and anxiety generally is, is cured through connection and relationship so if you have a secure relationship yep um, I've got a question um, when I do groundwork with Colin you're gonna meet Colin, Colin. Um, he drops his wanger oh yep 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 <laughs> Good. then he can get a little bit Oh, he yes, gets a little bit amorous. A little bit amorous. Okay. And okay. then you have to kind of just stop and yep. just go for a walk. Yeah. Because you just That's can't. Good. That's good response. Yep. Yeah. Because the thing is that he can be himself. So he's relaxing. He's relaxing. And often when I work with the gelding, that it doesn't take long before the wanger comes out and they. He just loves it. And they, it's and they start often to. Not like it just comes out. Like he then gets quite like. It gets quite amorous. Yeah. Yeah. Anything. How old is he? Oh, Colin's a little bit too much, but 12. no one believes that. No. Okay. Everyone goes. Oh, we have to excuse the youngsters. Yeah, so just send the energy in another direction, ask him to do something like something you do. Else. Just okay. let's do something, come back and you'll probably find. Especially with the flexing, when you start flexing and relaxing, that, that's when it sort of all yeah. starts to happen. Yeah, here yeah. door's been touched. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. So it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's just, yeah, oh, look at it's, it's, it can't go any further than that, can it? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> They're just giving something to do. <laughs> oh, you'll meet him anyway. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, would you say that's positive? If that was yes, yeah, okay. I'd say positive. You know, I mean, the, uh, if it, if the amorous side of it is is, is taking it too far, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, just give him something to do. Yeah, okay. send him around. Because it starts to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Too much. <laughs> I, and uh, it's interesting because I've met a mare like that uh, not so long ago. Oh. A mare too. Yeah. So uh, maybe a hormonal imbalance, but as soon as you start to come in here, she goes. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, <coughs> and especially if the owner goes, um, is working with her and sort of steps into this position straight away, she gets all amorous and pushing you into her. And it actually can be quite dangerous because she was, she was then rearing up. Oh. She was getting really, you know, like into really? it, whatever it is she's going on in her head. Um, and then, uh, then she'd rear up. Oh. So th what we did then was we just gave her something to do basically. Uh -huh. and when you ride her, she's absolutely fine. But Colin doesn't do anything like it. He just gets a bit. Everything comes up and he gets a bit. Yeah. But excited about it all, yeah. Uh, yeah. Get excited. Yeah, just giving something to do. Okay, cool. Yeah. Any Thank other questions? Uh, I've got another one. Yep. Uh, so my youngster started rearing up when I lead her back from the paddock. Yep. Um, and sometimes in the school, if I'm doing a bit of in hand work. Okay. Are you on a short line or on a on a Either. long line? Huh? Either. Either. Uh, when you when you're working with with him, are you nice and loose here, or are you holding tight here? Um, I mean, sometimes she's back there and I'm walking along with the wheelbarrow, so okay. you know it's relaxed. Um, and so she's economised when we're doing taking her to be having pretty inspection in May, and she's got to be able to be prepared find that her shoulder and I've got to have yep. not a tight hold for her but you know yep. properly in yep. hand stuff yes um and she was fine took her to her show at christmas at the skull um yeah and it just came out of nowhere after a last cross okay. literally out of nowhere and how old is she just two two okay is she is she hormonal yet or So yeah, there, there could be all sorts of things going on, but I'd have to see really to, to help you with that one. Yeah. What's going on there? Um, mostly it's the connection. So the I connection say, is not I, strong I, enough. I have messaged you about her because yes. I lost my boy in August, who I had a, the best connection with ever. Yeah. And and I think the grieving and you know another Connemara. Yep. It's a couple of similarities with them, and it's like I don't think I've got that connection with her, and I think I do agree that. Yeah, because she's young. I mean, yeah. there's, there's a couple of things. One, we could be putting too much pressure on her. Two, she could just be, fight, you know, um, pushing back basically and yeah. just dominating that space because that's what they'll do with each other. If they yeah. start off, especially when they're young, they'll play with each other, try and bite their legs, and then they'll come up and try and get on top of each other. So it could be, could be that dominance thing. It could be um, yeah, she's also, a playful she's thing. Yeah, because she's also not out in the herd. She's in her own paddock at the moment. On her own? Yeah, in, inside the field of six others. Others, oh, okay, but on her own. Yeah. Yep. So that's all, you know, another valid point is, does your horse get enough interaction with other horses? That's really important that they have yeah. interaction.
um, the scratching thing. Sometimes they, if they don't have enough ear, uh, interaction, they'll start nibbling and getting really interactive with the mouth or start biting and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So it can often happen from lack of interaction. Yeah. And sometimes I, th I find in the winter too, if they've got uh, coat, you know, jackets on, them, yeah. they don't really scratch each other. No. So they also there's a lack of interaction there. Right. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah, I'd have to have a you'll have a look and see, but yeah. it could be could be any one of those. Yeah. All, of <laughs> all of them yeah yeah it's just that it came out of nowhere because she's been so good yeah and i don't do a, he a hell of a lot with her because she's only baby and she could just be challenging you just yeah. you know trying to dominate that space good girl okay oh look at that oh, that's wow. 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 <laughs> so that's very good for her today mm. you know she's done a super job nice and calm she's relaxed She's able to have a stretch. Can you go in? And she's not worrying about the stick. Good girl. Okay, I think that's good for her today. I'm happy with what, what she's achieved today. Um, so we're gonna we'll have a nice cup of coffee and maybe have a chat, and then we'll bring um, bring Erin over. Thank you for watching.